Good evening. My name is Steve Lang. I'm an architect in St. Petersburg out of 526 15th Avenue Northeast. I don't think I'll need 10 minutes. I'm going to read from the minutes of the PST Board of Directors meeting from August 24th, 2011. And there are a series of uh, three bullet points. It's regarding fiscal year 2012 operating budget. David Prasad, Director of Finance, noted how a preliminary budget deficit of approximately five million was reviewed during a series of PSTA Board of Directors workshops. One of the options to balance the budget included a millage rate increase, which the board term will be approved at their meeting on July 27, 2011. The second bullet point, the strategy of the board is to develop a three-year budget approach while work is accomplished towards a future sales tax referendum. The public hearings for the final millage rate and budget will occur in September 2011 meeting. Third bullet, the board then authorized transmittal of truth and millage trend requirements for tentative millage rate and approved the tentative millage rate that previously stated 0.7305. So, the SDA moved forward with a 30% tax increase on the homeowners of Bell's County who themselves were struggling with a failing economy and their own financial shortcomings as a result of that failing economy. As they represented to the public that the projections based on their best accounting practices indicated they would fall $5 million short in 2012. They passed the increase on to the property owners, and this generated a $6.1 million in additional revenue to PSTA in the fiscal year 2012, raising their aggregate revenue from $26 million in 2011 to $32 million in 2012, which according to the expert projections should have balanced the budget. On April 6, 2012, just six months after the collection of the higher rates, DSTA published their 2012 operating budget projections, showing the original $5 million deficit had turned into a $2.5 million surplus, a change of $7.5 million, wiping out the entire, wiping out the, wiping out entirely the $5 million uh, deficit, plus building up the $2.5 million reserve, a feature required by the bylaws which is quite a turnaround, uh, begs the question, was the tax increase <coughs> too high? Then on June 12, 2013, the budget numbers for 2012 were revised once again, upward by another $5 million, now reflecting a surplus in 2012 of $7.5 million, up from the original forecast of $5 million deficit, for a taxpayer, uh, for a sizable taxpayer funded increase to PSTA of nearly $13 million. And this was after uh, February when PSTA went to the County Commission using the same uh, argument of their pending financial crisis and seeking a referendum for the 14% sales tax increase that if approved by the public will generate an additional $130 million to PSTA to manage and spend. Twice PSTA has used the 2012 budget to first obtain an unnecessary or tax increase then to get the County Commission to move forward on a countywide referendum based on false numbers in the 2012 budget that were repeatedly revised upward after the fact. The 2012 village increase was not needed by PSD as evidenced by their own reports over the last 18 months. Once again, they want to revise the ever-changing budget for 2012 and file it uh, uh, away in the uh, archives of history while stockpiling the ongoing tax increase to build up the reserves betting on the referendum to ultimately bail them out. The millage rate should be rolled back to zero, excuse me, 0.056 percent. The unneeded surplus of five million dollars tax revenue collected should be refunded to the taxpayers. PSDA should uh, pay for an in-depth and independent comprehensive financial audit and get to the bottom of their uh, inability to manage the hard-earned dollars that the Pinellas County taxpayers uh, generate and you deserve to provide. I do understand what the gentleman who spoke, and I, I apologize, I don't remember your name, but the gentleman that spoke for his theoretical attendance. I understand what he was saying because I was saying the same thing at the time we were just going to it. Um, I didn't see the need for it. Um, and I have thought about that exactly now. Um, however, and usually I am the person who would be throwing that out, 
I see the need for that money, exactly this extra money that what we're doing right now, putting it aside. We don't need it for operations as much as we thought we did, but we absolutely need it for the capital side that has not been addressed for at least five years. That's the part we've been taking out of. And we've been using all legal, whether you agree with it or not, I hate it, but we've been using our federal grant money, um, and please make sure I say this the right way, that is for maintenance um, towards operations maintenance versus capital. And, and it's allowed, um, but it is not a good way to operate a business. And so this extra money that we've been getting, we are steering away from that. And that is really, really important. Um, because unfortunately, buses are anywhere from 500 to a million dollars, depending on what time bus you buy. And um, I mean, just think about the cost right there, just replacing three buses or four buses. Um, that's not giving us any of the other capital things that we need to do. So even though we might not have needed it that year, and I agree with you, I, don't, I didn't think we needed it that year either and expressed it very vigorously. Um, I do think what we're using it for is the right thing. So, um, I mean, the best thing, the best case scenario uh, to go to Orchard Point would be to maybe go back to the road back break. Um, but I think getting us through 2016 is important. If we are going to believe in this penny and believe that it's going to pass and hope that we do our jobs right, then I think we need to not be able, not have to take out loans and I think we need to get to that point to have that money cover us. So um, I absolutely don't think that we need to increase our millage rate at this point. 